Hi Church and a very Merry Christmas to you and your family across all of our campuses, Santon, Kailami, Centurion, Belito and Durban North and wherever you may be watching from. The season is rather unusual, however we trust you keeping safe. We trust that you're looking after yourself and we trust that it has still been a festive season. It really is a special day as we are reminded of the reason why we have hope and that is because of Jesus, especially after the year that we have had. Now we're in for an incredible Christmas service for the whole family today as Pastor Andre brings the word into all of our campuses, plus our Kids Zone team has put together a really fun and exciting program for your kids. So why not head on over to the website and let them enjoy their very own Christmas service. Absolutely, they don't want to miss out. Now, being in this rather unusual season and being online, it actually presents us each with an opportunity to invite people to our Christmas services who wouldn't ordinarily join us. In fact, right now, think of someone. Why not text them? Why not share the link with someone? You never know what a simple invite might do in someone's life. In fact, this might be the best Christmas gift that we could give someone. That's right. Now there's no better way to start off our Christmas service than by worshipping Jesus. So come on, wherever we find ourselves today, let's lift our hands, let's lift our hearts as we sing together. Merry Christmas, church. Come on, let's celebrate King Jesus who was born on this day. Come on, lift your voice with one voice, with one arm. Let's celebrate him. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible said, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hot like it, the angels sing, the King was born today. And man will live forevermore, because on Christmas Day. Shepherds watch their blocks by night They see a bright new shining star They hear a choir sing a song The music seems to come from afar Hot night here, the angels sing A king was born today And we will live forevermore Because of Christmas Day and they found a little nook in a stable of forlorn And in a major cold and dark, Mary's little boy was born Hot night here, hot night here, the angels sing A king was born today And then we'll live forevermore because of Christmas Celebrate you, Jesus! Woo! Hallelujah! For a moment, for a moment, the world was a glow. All the bells rang out, there were tears of joy, and let the people shout and let everyone know there is hope for one to find peace. For a moment, the world was a glow. All the bells rang out, there were tears of joy, and let the
down his feet yeah. The stars in the sky Look down where he lay The little Lord Jesus Asleep on the towards your presence God we long for more of you God our hearts are fixed on you Jesus won't you open up your heart and your homes we're going to worship God we're going to thank him for this gift of Jesus thank you King Jesus we worship you we adore you you shall reign forever and ever
Your voice. And to the land, to the 
and he shall reign forever and ever. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your faith to heaven and sing, he shall reign. And he shall reign forever and ever. Forever. Oh, and he shall reign. And he shall reign forever and ever. Church, regardless of what you're facing right now, regardless of what you've been through this year, God is still on the throne and he reigns over absolutely everything. I love what it says in Isaiah 9, speaking of the birth of Jesus, because it's a great reminder, especially today, of who he is. Isaiah 9 and verse 6 says, A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His names will be Wonderful Advisor. He has wisdom for every situation and mighty God. He has power to do the impossible. Eternal Father, because He is our protector and Prince of Peace. It's only through Him that our relationship with God and with each other can be restored. It goes on to say, His power will never end. Peace will last forever. He will rule David's kingdom and make it grow strong. He will always rule with honesty and justice. The Lord All-Powerful will make certain that all of this is done. Church, today we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but as we do, we need to remember that He has power. He has authority. He reigns over everything, and He's able to work in our lives and in our circumstance. So come on, wherever you are, lift up your needs, lift up your burdens, and really trust in King Jesus as Pastor Claire prays. Come on, church, let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now we give you praise and we celebrate you, give you all the glory for this amazing day, the greatest gift of all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are the reason for the season. And we're just so grateful that you have carried us in your strength, your grace, your blessing and your power through what has been a very difficult year. And so today we can celebrate you together wherever we find ourselves as a church family united in Christ. Right now, Lord, we ask that anyone who is feeling unwell, whether it be in their body, their mind or their soul, that you would just put your healing hand upon them. Healing in the name of Jesus, we pray. And then Lord, if there's anyone who finds themselves alone today or who finds themselves in a place of, of of lack or of loss, Holy Spirit, won't you let them feel a tangible sense of your presence even now? Won't you encourage their soul and help them to know that they are loved and their future is good in you? Lord, we look to you now for an amazing service. We want to receive everything that you have for us on this Christmas day. And we trust that the future is bright. You are the one who reigns. You are the all powerful one. And as you've carried us before, you will continue to carry us into an amazing future that is blessed of you, Lord. We trust and are expectant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Well, church, Merry Christmas from the North Coast across all our locations today. Yes, church, a very Merry Christmas. We really hope you have a blessed day and enjoy celebrating with your friends and family. Amen. And if you're joining us for the very first time, we want to extend a special welcome to you. We're so honored that you're with us today. And we'd love for you to visit our website where you can download our visitors booklet, which will tell you all about our church, our vision, our values, and our culture. Yes, how special to be together as one church family on this unprecedented mm. Christmas. Well, church, before we continue with the service, an important reminder that there are no services on Sunday, the 27th of December across all campuses, but we'll be back online on the 3rd of Jan with great passion and excitement for all God has for us in 2021. Amen. It's going to be so good. Well, church, one of the ways in which we help people practically is through our Rivers Foundation. And as you can imagine, it's been a very busy year for our team. But what we've done is we've put together a special video to show you all the good work that the foundation has done over the last year, made possible by your continued generosity across all our locations. Let's take a look. 
Hi Church, a very Merry Christmas to you from the Rivers Foundation team. 2020 has been a crazy year with the pandemic. We were not able to do what we usually do the way we usually do things. However, with your extreme generosity, we were able to help thousands of people in need. We did PPEs for a number of organizations uh, like churches, because the churches were on the ground helping people from their communities. A number of NGOs also asked for PPEs uh, because they were helping people. When schools reopened, we were able to continue giving the teen girls their monthly toiletry packs. This was great help for the teen girls as they already missed out on a lot of school days. The packs enabled them to be at school every day, even during the weekends. In November, we went to a school, a very poor area, uh, the school is, is called uh, New Generation. It's in between shacks and almost 90% of the people are not working. So the children come from very, very poor background. As a foundation, we facilitated an eye testing for the entire school with about 1,300 kids. Each child that needs glasses will be able to get free glasses from this organization. For Mandela Month, across all campuses, we were able to bless people with winter clothing, blankets, shoes, and toiletries. And as a staff, we were able to distribute over 1,500 hot meals to the homeless people around the cities. Across all campuses, uh, we did um, uh, food hampers because that was the essential need. Most, uh, children were at home with their parents. We couldn't give them um, the mini loaves and the sandwiches that we normally do. So the food parcels uh, help them um, to feed them, but also help their families, the gogos that are there at home, their siblings that are um, not going to the schools that we support. So many people were blessed with us giving the, the hampers. I was overwhelmed by how much people participated in giving and supporting the foundation. I didn't expect this much, however, because people are faithful and they love to support, they gave from their little and it really, really touched my heart. Church, from the bottom of our hearts, we can't thank you enough for your generosity and support over this time. We've made a difference in the lives of thousands of people. And like we usually say, we can't do everything, but we can do something. Sia bonga. Reale Boha. Thank you. Well, hi there, church. It's great to join you online today. And it's so encouraging to see that as a church, we've been able to touch the lives of so many people through the Rivers Foundation this year. Our collective giving across all the campuses has made a significant difference. Yes, it has. Thank you, church, for your faithfulness and your consistent giving over what has been a very challenging year for so many. Well, it is Christmas time and here we are with our family in Durban North celebrating Christmas in our home. And normally we'd be running many, many services over Christmas. And although things are different this Christmas, I believe it's just as special. And we want to take an opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas from our family to your family in your home, from our home to yours. Yes, although we'd love to be in church today, we have much to be thankful for and to celebrate. And you know, it's so easy to focus on the things we don't have and all the things that may be wrong. But I find that the more thankful we are for what we do have, the more likely we are to receive what we don't have. That's right. And as we come around to our giving this Christmas, I want us to read from Matthew chapter 2. It's a passage of scripture we know well, and it's part of the Christmas story. Chapter 2 verse 9 says that the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. I think it's such a fitting passage to finish our giving off this year, a year in which our theme has been that of wisdom. And these men are referred to as the wise men because clearly they had wisdom. And we see two things these wise men did that are synonymous with wise people. And firstly, wise people 
worship Jesus. You know, there are many things we can give our devotion to. There are many things we can idolize and make a priority in our lives. But wise people recognize that Jesus is Lord and our worship should be reserved only for Him. That's so right. And the second thing we see here is that wise people give to Jesus. In fact, our worship of Jesus and our giving to Him are always connected. You know, the worship of these wise men naturally overflowed into generosity and they gave what they had to the Lord Jesus. And the gifts they brought were not just an afterthought or some of their leftovers. They also weren't re-gifting something they'd been given the previous year. No, no, these were valuable gifts that were no doubt a great sacrifice for them. But because they were wise, well, they understood the importance of their giving and they knew by faith that God is a rewarder of those who worship His Son Jesus through their giving. And I think it must have brought them incredible joy to give to Jesus. The Bible says that they, they followed the star for many days. They came prepared with their offering and they considered it the greatest privilege to bow down before Jesus and give Him the best offering that they could. And I want to encourage us all today to, to be like those wise men. Let's finish off this year of wisdom by bringing a sacrificial offering to the Lord, one that shows honor and reverence to the Lord Jesus, and one that is evidence of how incredibly thankful we are for every good thing that we have. You know, church, there's just so much to be thankful for. We're thankful for our church and for our leaders. We're thankful for good health. We're especially thankful for our beautiful children. We're thankful for God's continual blessing and provision. But we're most of all thankful for salvation, that God became man in Jesus so that we might know Him and receive Jesus as Savior. This Christmas, like those wise men, let's give to Jesus because He gave Himself to us. And as we all prepare our giving across the different campuses, let's have a look on screen at how we can give this Christmas. Giving online is quick, easy, and secure. Here's how. You can give straight through the Rivers app by selecting Give at the bottom of the screen. Select your campus and the amount you'd like to give, and you'll be directed to Snapscan to complete your transaction. You can also give directly via Snapscan by scanning this code. If you'd like to give by credit card, head over to the Rivers website and select Give Online. Finally, if you'd like to give by EFT, use the details on the screen. Well, there you go. I hope you've got your offering ready. Let's pray and commit this giving to the Lord. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name over this Christmas time. Thank you that you gave your very, very best to us. Thank you that you brought salvation to us through the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we bring you our very best. We bring our offering to you today to say thank you for every good thing we have. But most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus. Bless our giving today. In your precious name, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.
Christmas 2020. That's right. Merry Christmas. We hope you've had a fantastic holiday season so far. The year may not have looked the way we wanted to, but we hope that you found a way to celebrate anyway. Amen. You know, Christmas is not postponed. It's looking very, very different. Heaven is still heaven. God is still God. And we are still who we are. And so in this very difficult season, I want to encourage us all despite what we may have faced during the year, to keep Jesus as the reason for this season. Well, we're missing all your gorgeous faces and um, where you regularly sit and so on. But before we know it, we'll be back in all our local churches, worshiping God together and being the family of God. Well, Pastor Andre is not with us in our home because he is currently in the main auditorium building getting ready to bring the Christmas word. Amen. So from our family to your family, stay safe, be blessed, and have a wonderful Christmas season. Okay, what an unusual year at church that has left many people in unusual places with unusual experiences. I cool. can't, I can't say that. You don't have to. <laughs> mm, the dogs should Should we take the dogs outside? From our normal pack. <laughs> <laughs> Over here in the air to come to the tundra. I'm definitely looking at the lens. That is the longest sentence <laughs> in the world. Quite downtime. Who, who wrote this? Well, Merry Christmas, Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas, and Merry yes. Christmas. Christmas. What an unusual year, church. That has left many people in unusual places with unusual experiences. But it is so wonderful that we can still celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Albeit differently from our usual... Albeit quite differently from our usual pack services. Wherever you're celebrating Christmas, whether alone, at work, or on holiday, making memories with your family and loved ones, or enjoying quiet downtime, we are praying God's blessing, increase, and favor over you and the year to come. So from our home. So from our home. So from our home. So from our home. So well, from our home. So from our home. So from our family to yours. We are home. So from our home. So from our home. So from our home to yours. We are sending you all our love. And looking forward to the day we can see you again. Take care. Stay safe. 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 Take care and stay safe. Take care, stay safe. And a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And Merry 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 Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you, church, and our best wishes. I'm coming to you from our empty building. What an unlikely place I find myself in today, and what an unlikely place you find yourself in today. But nevertheless, from our family to your family, and from my family to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas. Hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. We're going to go to the Word right now, and I'm not going to be long. Let's take some time to just pray and thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who was born on Christmas Day. Father, we thank you for your Son, the gift of heaven, the sinless, perfect King of kings and Lord of lords, whom you sent to this planet to take our place and to die for our sins. We celebrate today as a momentous day where God visited the planet and changed our lives forever. Speak into every heart, encourage us from the word today 
and transform people's lives as we sit under the word and as we respond to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I was reading about a whole lot of people who celebrated Christmas in very unlikely and unusual places. One of them was an American fighter pilot in 2016 who wore a Santa hat and found himself over Syria on Christmas Day bombing ISIS. What an unusual way to spend Christmas. Then there's a man called Chris Seymour, and he's worked in the energy and gas industry for the last 15 years. And of those 15 years, he has spent six Christmases on an oil rig called the Neptune Energy Gas Rig. What an unusual place to celebrate Christmas out in the middle of the ocean. In 2016, there was a military surveillance aircraft that spent the entire Christmas day 9,000 meters in the air surveying and analyzing certain territory top secret for the American government. Then in 2005, there were a whole lot of soldiers that were sent to Afghanistan and they celebrated Christmas far away from home in what they must have thought a most unlikely place they would ever celebrate Christmas. Think about nurses and doctors. Often we don't remember them, but they often celebrate Christmas in hospitals, taking care of people, delivering babies, and we really appreciate that they do that. In 2010, I was reading that some 2,000 passengers found themselves celebrating Christmas in Paris's Charles de Gaulle Airport. The reason was ice and snow swept across Europe and 400 flights were cancelled. And so airport authorities laid on beds, they laid on food and Christmas toys for the stranded passengers who found themselves celebrating Christmas in the most unlikely place. But the place that's got to be the most unlikely to spend Christmas is a place where meteorologist Tamsin Gray has spent seven Christmases. She's from the UK and she monitors weather and she has spent seven Christmases in Antarctica in the middle of nowhere. Christmas in unlikely places. I wonder if you thought today that you'd be celebrating Christmas at home. I never imagined it. Usually we're packed out in our buildings all across the country and we are celebrating and queuing up in cars and there's festivity and there's coffee across all our campuses and we just look forward to hearing all the reports. But today, here we are celebrating Christmas at home. Maybe you're at work, maybe you're in a restaurant, maybe you're in a holiday home. You're in a most unlikely place. And I want to speak to you today about Christmas in unlikely places. Did you know that Christmas has always started off in an unlikely place? In fact, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. People expected him to be born in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the center of religious events, the center of religious life, just eight kilometers away. And that's why the wise men went there first, looking for him in Jerusalem. But he was born in Bethlehem, an unlikely place. And today we find ourselves in an unlikely place at home. Mary ended up in a stable putting Jesus in a manger. Jesus himself spent his first Christmas in the most unlikely place. You'd expect a pregnant woman to be in a hygienic environment with family and friends, but the Son of God appeared in a most unlikely place. Let's read the key text from Luke as we celebrate Christmas today and focus our thoughts on how God visited us in the most of unlikely of places. Luke chapter two and verse four, and the context is that there was a census. They were counting the population, and so Mary and Joseph had to participate in that. And reading from verse 4, it says, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, a feeding trough, because there was no guest room available for them. What an unlikely place to place a baby. And there were shepherds living out in the fields, nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they 
were terrified. You see, the glory can come to you at work. It can come to you in a stable. It doesn't have to be in a church building. If you're open to the glory of God today in the most unlikely of places, you can experience the glory of God and the glory of Christmas. Let's read on. It says, but the angel said to the, to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And then the scripture says, angels appeared, myriads of angels in heaven, and they began to sing, and then they disappeared. And then it says in verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they responded to this revelation. They didn't just say, oh, wow, it's Christmas. They responded. It goes on to say, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. A manger, a barn, shepherds in the field at work it says they were living there that was their workplace and in the most unlikely of places the son of God was revealed to them heaven revealed the glory of Jesus birth today we need to be open and no matter where we find ourselves we need to be responsive and open to Christmas Christmas isn't just in church in the foyer with uh, giveaways and and wonderful carols it's right where we are that God wants us to become aware that Jesus was sent to us. And Christmas this year is in a very unusual place and we need to celebrate it all the same. Now in the Bible, there are various verses and I want to just read a few to you where we find Christmas in the most unlikely of places, the most unlikely of books. And the first passage we read about Christmas is in the book of Philippians. Paul writing to them tells them of the second person of the Trinity, the Lord Jesus, and how he was born and described what Christmas was like in the book of Philippians. Let's read it, Philippians chapter two. And he says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Here we read that Jesus existed before time, then took on a human body, was born, came to the most unlikely of places, and he manifested himself and then died on a cross for us. Christmas has a purpose, not just the birth of Jesus to come and speak and teach, but Jesus' ultimate birth was meant to point to his death. And so this finite baby, the God of heaven, dwelt in him. Again, in John chapter 1 and verse 1, we read about who Jesus was and the Christmas story is portrayed completely differently. And John speaks about the divine nature of Jesus, again, in the most unlikely of places. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, speaking of Jesus. Through him, all things were made and without him, nothing was made that has been made. You'll remember in the book of Genesis when God speaks about creation and he says, let us make man in our image. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit participated in creation. And here John says, Jesus was there in the beginning of time. He helped create this world. And then he came and became a baby and was born in the most unlikely of places. He goes on to say here, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. In other words, what he's saying is the one who was and is and is to come, the creator of everything you see, allowed himself to take on a human body, to be put into a manger as a vulnerable baby 
in order that God might touch our world and reveal himself to us. Christmas is the most wonderful time. It's not a sentimental time. It's a time where God reaches through time and space and says, I love you and I want you to be my friends and I want you to be my family. Let's look at another verse in another interesting place, an unusual place, the book of Hebrews. And Paul writing to the Hebrews, or we think it's Paul that wrote the book of Hebrews, he says, but we do see Jesus who was made lower than the angels. He was made human because in Psalm 8 it says that we are just a little bit lower than the angels. So he became like us. And he says, for a little while now, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. So that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. He died so that everyone need not experience the death that is final and leads to punishment. It says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared their humanity came like us so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death that is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death he says here that Jesus came took on flesh to identify with us then to take our place to pay the penalty for our sins so that we didn't have to face that judgment ourselves. He became the ultimate sacrifice. That's what Christmas is about. God sending his own son to pay for our sins and to free us from the fear of death. One more unlikely verse, the book of Galatians chapter four. And here Paul writing to the church says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. What was the goal? Not some sentimental arrival so we could just look at the baby and go, ooh, but he came to adopt us into his family. It says, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so that you are no longer a slave, that's a slave to sin, but God's child, and since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. So here we find God sending his son into a hostile world to make us part of his family, and he sent him into the most unlikely place, and today coming into the most unlikely places, into your home, onto your patio, into your garden, into your bedroom, Into prison, Christmas is still celebrated in the most unlikely of places and has still got the same impact as we remember what Jesus came to do. I was reading a fascinating story about a man who works for the Salvation Army. And every year in December for the past 40 years, William Himes visits a prison in Chicago. There's some 10,000 inmates in that prison and it's called Cook County Jail. You may have heard of it. And this is what he says of these visits at Christmas time and celebrating Christmas in a very unlikely place, a prison. He says, a member of our group announces, gentlemen, please listen as I read a bit of the Christmas story from the Bible in Luke chapter two. Regardless of religious affiliation, a respectful silence falls on the room. Every phone conversation tails off. Following a brief prayer, everyone joins in singing Silent Night. At this point, an incredible thing happens, he says, every time. The cell block becomes a scene as spiritual and holy as any Christmas Eve service I've ever attended. Right there in the prison. He says, even hardened gang members are touched to the point of tears, singing this unlikely, culturally irrelevant old German carol. God's incarnation is experienced afresh. He says, as the carol concludes with a final sleep in heavenly peace, our group infiltrates the entire pod. We shake hands even with those confined behind cell doors and look every inmate in the eye wishing them God's blessing and Merry Christmas. It might not be movie material, but it's well worth the experience again and again. You see, like it was way back, the Lord came and Christmas occurred where the shepherds were, right where they were at, in the most unlikely place, in the field, in the barn, in a manger. God still comes today 
and reveals the Christmas spirit and the occasion of Christmas can take place and be experienced in the glory no matter where you are, even in a prison. Quickly, three things Jesus came to do. He came to show us God's goodness and God's glory. We read that in John chapter one. When Jesus was on the earth, he showed God was a loving God by healing and feeding people. And he showed God's goodness, demonstrating that God would forgive our sins in the person of Christ. Secondly, he came that we might receive adoption as sons. He didn't just come to teach us some good things that we need to do at work and how to behave socially. He came to make us part of his family, the heavenly family. He came to remove the barrier of sin so we could become children of God. And by receiving him and his sacrifice on the cross, we become part of God's family and are called the children of God. Thirdly, he came to free us from death and give us eternal life. And it's told to us in the book of Hebrews. Now, the reason he came to free us from death is because everyone who sins earns the punishment of death and gets sent to hell because we've chosen that path. But Christ came and said, I will take the penalty for their death. If they believe in me, they can be freed from death. So God's goodness is revealed. We become children of God. We're freed from the penalty of death and we're given eternal life. You say, well, that's wonderful. But you see, it's not just a fact, there has to be a response. And when you read the Christmas story and you see it's in unlikely places, there was still a response in those unlikely places. You'll remember the shepherds responded. And the first group of people here, let's just consider this for a moment. The first group of people where Christmas came in an unlikely place was to the shepherds. And the Bible says the glory of the Lord shone around them, but they jumped up immediately and said, let's go and see. The wise men, when they saw the star and knew that it was time for Christmas, they jumped up and traveled to Jerusalem expecting the Messiah. They came to worship. And then the Bible says the shepherds went out and told everybody. So Christmas requires a response. He's come. I want to see him. I want to celebrate him. And I want to worship him. I wonder if you're in that group of people today. Most believers are doing that today. And some Christians say, no, don't celebrate Christmas. It's a pagan festival. It's as good a time as any to focus on the wonderful thing that happened at Christmas. And it's good for us to talk about it, to respond to it, and to be grateful for it. But there were two other groups of people. We haven't read about them today, but let me tell you about them because they describe people right where we are today. The second group was Herod. Herod and people like Herod who want to rule their own lives and who want to be in charge of their lives and won't bow the knee to Jesus. Herod heard about Christmas, but then he sought to kill Jesus and went around killing babies to and under in order to remove the threat to his own rulership. And the people today want to get rid of Christmas. I don't, don't want any of that nonsense in my life. And it's a whole lot of rubbish. Are you one of those or are you one who wants to celebrate Christmas? But wait, there's a third group of people and there are a lot of people like this. They were the religious leaders, the scribes and the teachers of the law. When Herod went to them, they told him exactly when Jesus would come, who Jesus would be. They explained all the facts to Herod. Herod went off and tried to kill the baby Jesus. But the scribes and the teachers of the law knew the facts of Christmas, but didn't worship. They weren't against they weren't for, they were just neutral. And today you can't just be neutral. Know about it, know all the facts. You can't be against it. You need to be like the shepherds in the most unlikely of places, responding to the glory and worshiping God. Where do you find yourself today? And who are you today? Are you going to be like me? Celebrate Christmas. Thank God that he sent his son to die for us. I think it's a great time for us to remember Jesus, to thank the Father for the gift of his son and to respond to him today. Maybe you've known about Christmas, but you've never responded. I want to give you an opportunity right now, right where you find yourself in the most unlikely place to respond to the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a believer today, what we need to do today is to focus on him. If you're going to have a braai, if you're going to have lunch, you're going to eat in a restaurant, wherever you find yourself, don't forget Jesus. Let's remember him. Let's celebrate him. Let's talk about him because it is a wonderful thing that happened at Christmas. And although we're in an unlikely place, God can still be remembered 
and we can still celebrate Christmas. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you've never responded to him. Maybe you've been against him. Maybe you've just been neutral, but you can't say, I worship him. You can't say, well, I know him. You can know him. And he came that you might discover him, that you might know him, and that you might receive him. And like the shepherds, you need to draw near to him. You need to come and say, Lord, yes, I want to know you. I want to see you. And if you have that kind of attitude, Jesus Christ, who is now risen from the dead, will meet with you, save you, free you from the fear of death, give you the gift of being a child of God, and remove the fear of punishment in the future. You can know you're right with God. If that's you today, right where you find yourself in the most unlikely place, pray with me now. Pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for your son that you sent at Christmas that we might be redeemed, forgiven, and made children of God. Come into my life today. Make yourself real to me today. Reveal yourself to me today and make me a child of God. I open my heart and healed my life. I don't want to be the ruler of my life. I want you to be the ruler of my life. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. I receive you and I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there you go. Just a simple prayer like that can transform your life. And millions of people have prayed prayers like that and have responded to Jesus and have noticed a transformation in their lives. You know what? You've made a decision, but you need to make a journey. So click on the salvation button that you'll find on our website or scan this QR code on the screen and we'll take you on a bit of a journey of faith and help you to walk with God and discover the wonder of the Bible, the wonder of Jesus and the wonder of being part of the family of God, the church. I hope you enjoy today. I hope you have a fantastic time with your family. Wherever you find yourself in the most unlikely of places, may the presence of God and the joy of Christmas be with you. Take care. God bless you. Have a merry, merry Christmas.
Thank you.